So uh, our lives are different now that we're empty nesters, wouldn't you say? Yeah, very different. Yeah. Very different, I would say. It made us pause and reflect and actually look back at, at like how much of our life, and not just our anchor life, but our life as a couple and our children has like transcribed on TV. And I was uh, kind of shocked at some of this stuff. I went through the level two ultrasound to get an idea of how detailed the picture is. Now we're looking right inside the baby's head. You can see the division of the brain. And it is amazing. The video of me being pregnant with Sam and the ultrasound and all that, and it just all comes rushing back. And it's been 21 years. He's 21. I'm going to start crying. I mean, seriously, it's been 21 years. I'm really glad that we did that story because we have that now on tape and everything. And you didn't see Frank in that because at the time we were working at competing stations. We were direct competitors. But I did contribute to that story. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. Go. Yeah. <laughs> chasing kids or chasing news, Frank Vassalero seems always to be on the move. Well, and then when you started, you came over to work, and that's when we started focusing on the children, the stories on children, on kids. Don't sword your brother, okay? Oh, uh, hey, hey, I think running with sticks is probably a bad idea. Running with scissors walk would quickly. be worse. You can walk quickly with the sticks. That was 16 years ago, and, yeah. and they actually used our kids as a way to get into the story about Amelia and I working together. Well, they understand mom and dad are on TV, and now they understand mom and dad are going to be working together. Um, but my biggest concern is that they understand that it's just a job. We just want to teach them to have a nice, normal life where they don't think that there's going to be anything different regardless of what their parents do for a living. I love, love, love seeing these stories and seeing the video of them as young kids. And I think we really started the story, I uh, started doing these stories because we had so many questions about parenting. They've been good. They have been. Don't you think? And when I look at... I think a lot of people do. That's why we did them. It wasn't so much for us. It was, yeah. we're kind of in the same boat. And, you know, of course, most of the people we hung out with, same thing, really young mm -hmm. kids. Uh, at the time and, and it brought up a lot of things about um, parenting and styles and and we have very different approaches we have and we still do although I might have mellowed just a little bit maybe on my parenting approach yes. let's put the lunchables back yeah. put the lunch I, just a little I started learning about the pick your battles later on Later yes, on. that you means did. not everything is a battle. <laughs> Every that is. single thing. <laughs> I'm talking about with the kids. You're right. You're right, though, because you, you <laughs> told me that don't go nuclear on this. And I, I finally learned after uh, our son was 21. I think yeah. that's when I started calming down a bit. But then when they started going to school, you know, we wanted them to have as, as much of a normal life, and we weren't going to completely and continually kind of use them uh, on TV. So then you didn't so see did a lot of that. our kids for a long time until they got to the point where they were in high school and could kind of start deciding a little bit more. On if they own. wanted to be on TV or not. Yeah. Yeah. And that led to this uh, phone usage story. I made me really conscious about how much time I spend on my phone. So then I'll usually like go on the app if I think I'm on my phone for a while and be like, oh, like 20 minutes and I better get off. And I turned out to be one of the biggest uh, phone users. I was surprised at that. You're Really? You're always scrolling, looking, let me answer this. Even now, texting, texting away, but anyway. The race to a Minnesota boys basketball state championship always starts with a pregame ritual. Are you going to face paint? Fantastic. When are you putting it on? Well, uh, athletics became a really big part of uh, all of our kids' lives. Uh, well, they were for all, when they were young, too. They were very yeah. active in, a, in athletics. Yeah, I shouldn't say that they became a big yeah. part. They, you, you know, when, uh, the higher up you go, the higher the stakes become. And, um, you know, we're really, really fortunate. All of our kids have played in state championships and been to tournaments. And the station asked to tag along one day uh, as our son Sam was heading to uh, a state game at Williams Arena. Can we please just talk about this really quick because I posted it on Facebook. It's the internet, you can talk about whatever you yes. want. Yes, all right, well we're gonna talk about, so there was one of the first state games and Frank was a freak. <laughs> this is what I've learned now. This is what I have learned because I wanted to stop for coffee and it was at Williams Arena, downtown, right? The game. It's, yes. Yeah. And lost his mind because I went in to go get coffee and they're just taking a little too long I guess came running in yelling going nuts we're on the highway yelling at the people on the highway because they're going too slower they're not driving the right way and, uh, I, I and that's when I realized you would think I would have known after all the years together <laughs> <laughs> that this shouldn't surprise me, but I was just floored. And because actually this just happened recently too. 
you know, there's another, <laughs> there's another way to approach this story uh, from a very calm, sensible standpoint, and that is, you know what, if you want to stop for coffee and throw off the entire schedule of a once-in-a-lifetime event, then you know what, get up earlier and get ready to go or get your own coffee. Don't be a I, coffee snob. We got a coffee maker at home, makes great coffee. I, okay, you know, I didn't a, know that then. There's a couple ways to approach it. I didn't know that couple then. couple ways to approach it. We just did this because our, our oldest son is playing uh, football in college, and I thought, what, can we just stop for a coffee before we actually get on the highway? Wouldn't let, wouldn't stop. So how many years later, and it's still the and same. And you haven't learned your lesson. <laughs> I know. No, I have, because now I go out early and yeah. get my coffee. Well, there you go. Prob I just want to throw that in solved. there. I just went through that in there. What a great story. <laughs> so speaking of stories, the next story is now our kids are gone, right? Now we have all this time to spend getting along famously together and... Um, getting coffee for each other. Right, but it's so different, you know, because our whole lives just focused around our kids for I so know. long. And uh, they were the most important and still are the most important yeah. things in our lives. So um, We have two dogs, though. They're like our children. We do, but we're we hoping that we can do some stories about... Um, the mistakes we made getting ready to be empty nesters, things that we learned about it, share our experience in hopes that it, it better helps you. And, and that's the story that's coming up on TV. Uh, and we hope you tune in for that.